them to soften up, to quit doing what they do, because they're not an eye. We make sure that they work. If you had someone that was coming to attack a part of your body, a sensitive part of your body, would you want the strong parts of your body to be ready to do their job? Or would you rather they were soft and limp, like every other part of your body? So we could all be just gelatinous goo. That is not the body of Christ. We need fists in the body of Christ. We need eyes in the body of Christ. Let them do what they're designed by God to do. Take a look at verse 24. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. The people that are here today are not here by accident. I don't believe that they are. We're meant to serve each other, honor each other, care for each other, or to be concerned for each other. If someone suffers, we suffer too. Now let me tell you this. You think, no I don't. Some of these people I don't even know. I have no idea what their problem is. And when they hurt, it affects me not. I come to church, I leave church, it doesn't affect me at all. Let me, consider, let me ask you this question. Is it possible in your body to have something wrong and not feel it? Yes. If you ask any cancer patient, if they would have liked to know if something was going wrong inside their body long before they found out the physical pain, would they have wanted to know? Yes, they would have. In the body of Christ, just because it doesn't affect you and make you feel it, doesn't mean it won't. Early detection of problems in the body of Christ is super important. Because even if someone on this side of the room is hurting and it doesn't affect someone on this side of the room, it will. It'll make its way around the church. It will harm the church. The cancer will spread. False teaching, disencouragement, frustration. Someone who is in pain and is not being served. Someone who is actually hurting desperately and is in need. Someone who is hungry. They need help. Why? It will affect you. It will affect the entire church. We need each other. Paul closes by saying this about Christian service. And I'm just going to let him speak for himself from verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles... Second, prophets, third, teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, those, with, those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts? And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Let's pray. Father, 
You are the absolute embodiment of love. Forgive us when we do our acts of service for men to see or we do it because we want to be more saved or we do it for any other reason other than the, the act of love given to another member of the body. Forgive us when we choose to take the gift you have given us and push it aside and bury it in the ground because we don't think it's important enough, because we don't think it's special enough. It's exactly what we need and exactly where our joy will come from. Forgive us when we take the people in the church for granted, when we could not care less what other people are going through when we come and we go from this place totally ignorant about any other person's problem. Forgive us all the more when we do know about someone's problem and we choose to completely forget it and do nothing about it. Forgive us for the short-sightedness of thinking that it will never affect us and that it doesn't concern you and that somehow we can be all right with you but not serve others. I ask that you would help us as you fill up our cup with love, as you fill up our cup with service and grace, and as you give us patience and wisdom and joy, that it would overflow and it would spill out onto everyone around us, everyone at work, everyone in church, all of our friends, our family, those who are saved, those who are unsaved. May they just be bathed in the love and the joy, the peace, the kindness, the patience, the gentleness and the self-control that you are pouring into us. May others benefit from it. First, here at this church, into the global church, into the city of Ottawa, into our families and our friends that we desperately want to see come to you. Lord Jesus, drive into our minds the importance of service and help us understand the undergirding of all of it being love and all because you loved us first. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen.